It's about time I make this video. After too much thought and a lot of needless effort, I've figured it all out. We're going to dive deep into aspects, classes, and god tier. I'm going to have to split this up into three separate videos. This one's about aspects. Now sit down and close your fucking mouth. Class is in session. <sighs> space. When the subject of space arises, a lot of people jump to creativity as the end-all be-all of a space player. But this is something you should omit in tearing someone, because most people have been called creative in their lives. It's a very meaningless phrase. Focus should instead be on the motherly nature of space, because space isn't just creativity, it's creation itself, and as such has a great focus on making things and having a mind akin to a caretaker. Jade Harley is our only canon space player who has successfully gone god tier. Jade exhibits many motherly characteristics to the point where you could even pin her parenting style. She frequently intervenes in her friends' lives because she knows about their destinies, but while informing them of certain acts that will inevitably take place, she still manages to keep a hands-off approach to handling their safety and security. She typically informs them of things they need to know while intentionally leaving a lot out of her explanations. Before delving into the antithesis of space, it would be appropriate to explain why I know all of the antithesis pairs. It's laughably simple, and the fact that people still bicker about what aspect is what's antithesis makes me want to swallow bullets, then a gun, load the bullets with my stomach, and shoot myself from the inside. Just look at the shoes of a particular aspect's god-tier outfit, and look at the color. That corresponds with the color of the antithesis. No more arguing? Great. Moving on. Time. Time is the antithesis of space. Space represents birth, while time represents death, or rather the process leading to death. Time players seem to, fi seem to be hard to find. They're typically reserved and don't talk to people about much. It's pretty difficult to tell the difference between time, doom, and void players because their aspects are the three main destructive aspects, and are very similar, in that they all tend to obfuscate themselves. To discern whether or not someone is a time player rather than one of the other destructive aspects, look at their hobbies. Time players are the only of the destructive aspects that find themselves interested in creative endeavors like music, art, or writing. Dave Strider strongly exhibits a backhanded creativity with his comic Sweet Bro and Hella Dreff, which was created ironically. He's typically jaded about his emotions and is upset when Rose goads him into telling her about his problems. Life. Life is a pretty complicated aspect because it is everything that isn't nothing. As Leonardo da Vinci wrote, movement is the cause of all life, and from, an and from an atomic standpoint, everything is moving. The personality of a life player is typically grandiose and perhaps even narcissistic. Life players have big ideals, but typically not a lot of direction. Bethry Pachys has big plans for changing the way her society behaves. She has reverence for pretty much anything she can see moving, as seen in her interest in basically all sea creatures that's manifested itself into a free-for-all animal habitat within her hive. She is intent on changing what the word call means in her society from a synonym to kill to a word more synonymous with helping the needy. Void. There's not much to say about void considering it's nothing. It's the antithesis of life and as such most perfectly embodies death. Being one of the three destructive aspects, it's difficult to tell when you actually have a void player on your hands. Void players may show some signs of loving things for no particular reason, as life players tend to, but most of the time they have few particular habits or hobbies. Roxy Lalan doesn't have much going on for her as far as life goals or even any particularly great skills, save for being a hacker. However, she becomes infatuated with a variety of things and people as passive void players tend to. Hope. Hope oftentimes involves changing what the universe has in store for you. Hope players tend to have irrational goals or downright preposterous lives. A sign someone is a hope player is irrationality and a lack of understanding consequences or having much foresight. Aired and Empora want to destroy all the land-dwelling life on his planet, even though some of them are his friends. He has, a, he has a more hopeless mind than most hope players because he's a prince, but classes are another thing and we'll cover that later. Doom. The last of the destructive classes, Doom involves fate. Doom is the antithesis of hope. Doom players typically accept their fate without much fighting, being the opposite of hope players. Doom players can be unintentionally destructive and have the easiest time accepting tragedies. Salix Captor knew from the start of his session that he would die and go blind. He never showed any fear about it. 
He was actually happier when he was blind and dead than when he had vision and he was alive. Light. Light is the embodiment of knowledge, luck, and fortune. A light player is usually knowledgeable and fortunate. They may be thought of as know-it-alls and can be a bit egotistical. Finding a light player isn't that hard because they're easy to see. However, mind players are often mistaken as light players because both involve intellect. Rose Lalonde is, a pretty egoti is pretty egotistical and thinks highly of her own intelligence, but she's ashamed when she looks back on her grandiose actions and writings. She has a lot of inherent knowledge, but can make mistakes. Breath. Breath is the antithesis of light and embodies ignorance, comedy, and confidence. Breath players have a bad habit of not considering their actions and how they will affect the future. They usually make people happy and are typically pretty nice people with good intentions. John Egbert is pretty stupid, but he's a really good guy. On his planet, he often bought expensive things for the salamanders for no particular reason. Mind. Mind represents logic, justice, and balance. Mind players tend to be intellectual and may seem emotionally shallow. They find it easy to manipulate people. Typically, you won't be able to see a mind player's feelings until closer personal contact is made. Mind players tend to find emotional outlets like art, roleplay, or overcompensation. Therese Pyrope has a strong sense of justice and acts out her emotions about injustice in roleplay with her stuffed animals. Therese is great at manipulating her enemies and friends into doing what she wants. Heart Heart is the antithesis of mind and it embodies emotion, passion, and love. Heart players can be ruthless, but are typically very compassionate and sweet. Heart players may have an easy time with their emotion, but have some emotional detriment like being bad with relationships or having an uncontrollable heart. Nepetaleon loves to ship her friends and is quite an expert on their emotional affairs, but it's difficult for her to admit her own romantic feelings for her crush for her flush crush. She takes satisfaction in helping her friends in any way, especially in interpersonal relationships. Blood. Friendship, teamwork, and trust are the main tenets of blood. Blood players have many great leadership qualities and typically handle a lot of stress. Blood players are pretty bossy and can sometimes get yelly but are overall friendly and caring. Carcat Vantis acts out angrily when he tries to get his team together, but everyone knows he cares about them because he always takes helpful concern in their interpersonal relationships. He is typically very concerned about everyone's safety and is very upset when tragedy befalls his team. Rage. Lastly, rage, the antithesis of blood. Rage is fear, anger, and betrayal. Players of rage will most often have difficulty making friends or keeping lasting friendships. After losing a close tie or experiencing some kind of emotional trauma, rage players act out in fits of violence. Gamzee Makara was content in using the troll equivalent of opium, or sopor, which subsided his rage. After stopping the use of Sopor, his first negative interaction resulted in an ultra-violent outburst in which he murdered two people. <clears throat> and that ends our lesson on aspects. I hope we all learned something today.